Hey Optimancers, Chris here. I want to talk today about a spell I've promised to talk about for a long time, and that is the Fog Cloud spell. This is easily the most misinterpreted spell in the game. Uh, now there are more complex spells, uh, but the Fog Cloud spell invokes a number of rules that people don't know very well. And so when people cast Fog Cloud, then often DMs just kind of make it up as they go because they don't necessarily know the exact rules that encompass a Fog Cloud spell. But when you do know the exact rules, then the Fog Cloud spell is likely to act very differently than you might expect. So let's look at the Fog Cloud spell for a second. So the Fog Cloud spell is a concentration spell with a one hour duration. It takes one action to cast, and it can be cast up to a 120 foot range. Now the area it encompasses is a 20 foot radius sphere. So that is 40 feet in each direction. That is going to encompass 64 squares. Uh, now unlike a lot of other spells that encompass those, that kind of area, this one also goes around corners. So it will last for your concentration up to an hour or until a wind of moderate or greater speed, at least 10 miles per hour, disperses it. Now, if we cast this spell at a higher level, the radius increases pretty substantially. Uh, the radius will increase by 20 feet for each additional spell level. So if we cast it with a second level spell, we now have a 40 foot radius. Now that's actually far more than twice the size because what ends up happening is it's 16 squares by 16 squares. That's a total of 256 squares if we cast it with a second level slot. Now all kinds of characters can get the Fog Cloud spell. Druids, Rangers, Sorcerers, Wizards, uh, Tempest Domain Clerics, and don't forget we also, when, as soon as we have the Wizard uh, as one of the classes that can get the spell, that means that Arcane Tricksters and Eldritch Knights can access this as well. But remember that Arcane Tricksters have limits in the number of non-illusion or enchantment spells they can get. And Eldritch Knights have restrictions in the number of non-evocation or abjuration spells they can get. This is a conjuration spell, so in both cases we're going outside of their specialties. They have a limited number of spells they can get outside their specialties, but Fog Cloud could be one of those spells. And because it's a first level spell, it could be one of the first spells they get. So what the Fog Cloud spell does is it creates heavy obscurement in the area of effect. Uh, so what does heavy obscurement actually do? So a heavily obscured area, such as darkness, opaque fog, or dense foliage, blocks vision entirely. So in a fog cloud, you cannot see at all. A creature effectively suffers from the blinded condition while trying to see something in that area. A blinded creature can't see, and they automatically fail any ability check that requires sight. Attack rolls against the creature have advantage, and creature attack rolls have disadvantage. So this is one of the places where this spell ends up getting misinterpreted because if we have a fog cloud, everyone inside that area is blinded, including the caster. So what it means is everyone has disadvantage on all attack rolls, but they also have advantage to being attacked. So when you take advantage and disadvantage and combine them, they cancel each other out. Furthermore, any additional things that might cause advantage or disadvantage, they don't stack. So as soon as you do a fog cloud, all attacks within the fog cloud against somebody else are automatically straight up. No advantage, no disadvantage. If uh, you are fighting giant rats and they have pack tactics and they would normally get advantage, it's gone because you cannot stack the advantage they get from you being blinded and their pack tactics. Uh, and they already have the disadvantage from being blinded, so it's all straight up. There's a couple things that are different about a fog cloud and say a darkness effect. The first is there is an ability called Devil Sight that allows you to see through magical darkness. But Devil Sight does not allow you to see through fogs. So fog cloud will still shut down somebody with Devil Sight. The second thing is True Sight. True Sight will also allow you to see through magical darkness. A monster with True Sight can, out to a specific range, see in normal and magical darkness, see invisible creatures and objects, automatically detect visual illusions and succeed on saving throws against them, and perceive the original form of a shape changer or a creature transformed by magic. Furthermore, the monster can see into the ethereal plane within the same range. Nothing there about fogs. So true sight as well will not allow you to see through fogs. And the fog cloud is not an illusion, so it's not like they can perceive it as an illusion because it's a conjuration. It is a real fog. It just happens to be magical. So the only way 
that anyone can see through a fog cloud is with blind sight and not a lot of creatures have blind sight in the game does it hide creatures and the answer to that is no uh, heavy obscurement does not automatically hide creatures in order to be hidden you must make a stealth roll so when you are in a fog cloud and there are other creatures in a fog cloud you know where they are and they know where you are so in D&D, an invisible creature can always try to hide. When you are in a fog cloud, you are effectively invisible uh, to all your enemies because your enemies are all blinded. Now the rules state what you do is you're going to make a dexterity stealth check. That stealth check is going to be opposed by the passive perception of the enemies. So when we do a fog cloud, we now have an opportunity to use the hide action. And if we use the hide action and we make our dexterity stealth check and we beat the passive perception of the enemies, we are now hidden. Now we can move around that fog cloud and they don't know where we are anymore. So what about movement? Because when we talk about misinterpreting rules, again, this is one of those things that gets misinterpreted because there are overland rules that take place over an hour, a day, or longer that say that if you want to move uh, stealthily when you are overland traveling, then you would have a reduced movement rate. But there is no rule that moving stealthily in combat on a round-by-round -round basis reduces your movement. So when we are hidden, once we've successfully made that stealth roll, we can now move around at our full movement rate, and as long as we have already succeeded on that stealth check, we will remain hidden. The one thing that can give away our position when we are stealthy is by making an attack roll. Soon as we make an attack roll on an enemy, then we will reveal ourselves whether the attack hits or misses. Now if you have the skulker feet, if the attack misses, you will not be revealed. Now presumably, making noise will also reveal our position. So if we cast a spell with a verbal component, that could also reveal our position. Now remember that a sorcerer who has fog cloud might be able to use subtle spell as a way of casting spells within a fog cloud without revealing their position. But someone who can make a lot of use out of a fog cloud is anyone who can make their stealth roll with a bonus action. This includes rogues of second level or higher who gain the cunning action ability because a rogue that gains the cunning action ability can then use their bonus action to become stealthy. They can move at their full movement rate uh, and then on following rounds if they make an attack they can make their attack which would reveal them and then they can use their bonus action to make another stealth roll and then they could potentially move away again. Uh, so this can be really of great advantage to a rogue. Now, I should mention that because we are canceling all advantage and disadvantage, they need to qualify for their sneak attack by having an ally within five feet of that enemy because they cannot get advantage on their roll. I should also point out that goblins, as a racial ability, can do a hide action as a bonus action. So a goblin character can get a lot of use out of a fog cloud spell. So to sum up, what good is a fog cloud? Is there any value in having a fog cloud spell? Well. Number one, we can use it as a way to remove advantage from enemies, because if enemies are attacking with advantage, soon as we lay down a fog cloud, that advantage is gone. Number two, if say we're in a dark area and we're taking on something that has dark vision and maybe we don't have a light source, then a fog cloud again can remove that advantage from them uh, because everyone's blinded and all advantage and disadvantage is removed. Number three, we can use a fog cloud to improve our stealth ability because soon as we have a fog cloud, we have heavy obscurement, which is going to allow us to do the hide action. Number four, if we can do the hide action as a bonus action, that's doubly useful for us because we can actually do the hide action on the same round that we create the fog cloud. And finally, the value of a fog cloud spell, and this comes up a fair amount, is a number of abilities and spells require you to be able to see your target. And as soon as you cast a fog cloud spell, unless they have blind sight, they will be unable to use those abilities or spells. Now what the fog cloud doesn't do is it doesn't slow anyone down, even if they're using stealth. Because remember, again, you can stealth at your full movement rate. Uh, number two, what it doesn't do is it doesn't impose disadvantage on anybody's attack rolls uh, because when both creatures have the blinded condition, which effectively they will, then advantage and disadvantage cancel out. 
And number three, on its own, it can't prevent people from knowing where you are. You must include the hide action if you don't want the enemies to know your exact location. So that's what a fog cloud spell does. I don't think a fog cloud spell is good for any spellcaster. If you want to make use of a spell like fog cloud, you need to think about what it does and how you can take advantage of that. Uh, so the fog cloud spell, first off, for any spellcaster, I guess it could be useful for removing advantage from enemies, and it could be useful for removing line of sight for creatures that are requiring line of sight for abilities or spells. But to really make use of a fog cloud spell, you need to have stealth. And ideally, you need to have the ability to do stealth as a bonus action. Uh, because if you can do stealth as a bonus action, then you can make attacks on your round and use stealth again. So that's basically all I have to say about the fog cloud spell. It's not a lot. But there is a lot of things about the fog cloud spell that I think get misinterpreted in the rules. Those are the rules as they're written. Your DM may house rule it, but if you play fog cloud with the rules as written without any house rules, then that's how it works. So I hope that's of use to you and I'll talk to you next time. Until then, I'm going to sit back and relax. Have some fun. D&D &D is for everyone. Thanks and I'll see you next time.